Welcome to the School Leaders Podcast. My name is Dr. Gastrit Harrigan, the podcast for current and emerging school leaders, those who support and supervise them. You will hear from passionate educational leaders who are transforming their schools, communities, and creating positive outcomes for students. I will also share my personal reflections and tips from over 15 years as a school leader. Together, we will talk about how to level up our schools and leadership practices. Hello, welcome to the School Leaders Podcast. This is your host, Dr. Gastrid Harrigan. Thank you for making the School Leaders Podcast part of your growth journey. Several years ago, I remember having a new and different boss. At the time, it was my third boss. This boss was brilliant, kind, and had a very high expectation. But her style was very different from my previous bosses. I remember having several frustration moments trying to decipher and understand what she wanted from me. My points of frustrations were I had been doing a great job. I had been doing things a certain way for several years. And from my perspective and uh, from previous bosses, I was doing a great job. I was getting positive results and the school was moving in the right direction. At the time, I spoke to and seek guidance from several people. Two people really helped me understood uh, my new boss. It was my mentor and my secretary. My mentor helped me to frame things that I was not looking at uh, from my boss perspective. My mentor helped me adjust uh, to her style and expectations or demand. My secretary, on the other hand, helped me see that I needed to communicate with her more often. I needed to share uh, what was going on, what I was working on, and share progresses on a regular basis. By following my mentors and my secretary's words of wisdom, I was all suddenly getting praises and compliments from her. She was highlighting the work I was doing in her meetings, and eventually, I even got an overall highly effective. In today's episode, I am going to share uh, ways and tips for how to increase your influence up, down, and across your organization. But before we get too deep into today's episode, I want to encourage all of our listeners to join the School Leaders Podcast community on Facebook. There, we continue and extend our conversation from the episodes. Also, don't forget to check out my website at www.drgharrigan.com. Again, that's www.drgharrigan.com. There, you can listen to the podcast, read our monthly blog, and sign up for our monthly newsletter. I also would like to take some time to thank all of our listeners on the various Facebook platform who uh, have been sharing the latest episode. On Facebook, I want to thank Lauren Morris Vachon, uh, Sylvester Clark, Donna Bates, and Kadeen Gabon. On Twitter, thank you to Skim Mirk, Greater Good in Education, Allen Education, Rita Wise, Eve, Dr. Shelton Jordan, Miss Prosper, Lori Huston, Jen, Jamie Higgins, Dr. Tim Cusack, and uh, Dr. Miller Hawkins, Joe Apaduka, Principal Porcina, Miss Rowe, Deborah Martel Rogers, Dr. Brian Williams, Jason Petroth, and Miss Farquhar. On LinkedIn, thank you to Chaz Perez, Dr. Brat Baker and Tamika Wiggins. Thank you for sharing the podcast. Uh, to all of our listeners, don't forget to share uh, the podcast on wherever you listen to the podcast. And please tag me so I can personally thank you. 
At this time, take a moment to subscribe to the podcast and share this episode. And don't forget to leave a five-star rating and a positive comment. When you do, it helps other listeners to find the podcast. Let's get started. In today's episode, I'm going to share ways and tips to increase, how to increase your influence up, down, and across your organization. Whatever the type of organization you are leading, to be effective in your role require being able to influence people. In fact, John Maxwell, leadership guru, said that leadership is influence, nothing more, nothing less. Let me repeat that. Leadership is influence, nothing more, nothing less. We must be able to influence or manage up, down, and across our organization if we are going to increase our influence and effectiveness. Here are some of the tips that you can use to help you increase your influence in every direction, up, down, and across. Number one, understand your organization. Great influencers have a solid uh, sense of organizational intelligence. They understand every level of their organization, top to bottom, bottom to top, and across the organization. And uh, great influencers build uh, their organizational understanding, meaning that they spend time with people throughout the organization. They are usually people who are inquisitive and listen carefully. You must have a good understanding of your organization or what we call organizational intelligence. You need to be tuned in and understand the big picture of your organization. Understand what your boss, your superintendent, your CEO is trying to accomplish and being tuned into that message, into that vision and seeing the big picture will help you to uh, grow your influence. You need to know Uh, who operates things and how things happen in your organization. When you do, it will carry and help you have great influence. Number two, develop a solid reputation. The best influential school leaders understand the importance of building and maintaining an excellent personal reputation. They cultivate the kind of behavior that inspire trust and respect in people around them. That means being present. Uh, That means as a school leader, being dependable. As a leader, being personable. And communicating not only expectation, but sharing a shared vision. When you develop a solid reputation as a leader who get things done, as a leader people can trust and respect, as a leader who's very dependable, who uh, people can trust, then it helps to uh, helps influence your helps increase your influence by developing a reputation, a solid positive reputation. Number three, cultivate trust. Influence is central to leadership and trust is also central to influence, especially when you are guiding or leading people through risks and changes. They need to know they can count on you when you're a new leader, when you are new to a school, new to a department or even new to the district or new to the organization. You need to cultivate trust. Inferential leaders make sure that their character is grounded in integrity. You must be a person of integrity to be able to develop and cultivate trust with people inside your organization and also outside your organization. Integrity is key to cultivating trust with people in and outside of your um, organization. You must also be inclusive. You must also be transparent in how you communicate. And it's important that you hold yourself consistently to high standards, to high expectation, to build your influence by fostering a sense of trust. When people know that you're transparent, when you communicate clearly and consistently, then it increases their sense of trust in you as a leader. Michael Fullen 
in his book, Leading in the Culture of Change, makes it clear that leaders must be consummate relationship builders with diverse people in groups, especially with people different than themselves. Let me repeat that again. Leaders must be consummate relationship builders with diverse people and groups, especially with people different than themselves. As a school leader, as a principal, as an assistant principal, as a district director, as a CEO, as a superintendent, you must work to build and foster trusting relationship up, down, and across your organization to increase your influence. Number four, promote others. The best influential leaders look for ways to bring value to other people. If you are going to increase your influence across your organization, up, down, and across, it's important that you learn to promote other people. Influential leaders promote uh, peoples and encourage them to think and act in ways that bring out their best selves. As a leader, you you must go out and find and promote talents, uh, promote people across your organization. Inferential leaders uh, empower others to develop their talents and excel in everything that they do. And then they reward that excellence. Again, it's important if you are going to influence Uh, increase your influence, that you find people within your organization, within your school, within your department, and empower them to reach their highest potential, to reach their personal goals. Burrard Deldi and Hill once stated that great leaders know that the, the secret to their success is helping others to become leaders. Let me say that again. Great leaders know that the secret to their success is helping others to become leaders. Now, I would add to that quote and say that great leaders know that the secret to their success and influence is helping others to become leaders. If you are going to be an influential school leader, if you are going to be influential and increase your influence, across your organization, even outside of that organization, you have to build other leaders. You have to find people within your organization, help them develop their talents, their ability, and then promote them, empower them to reach their dreams, to reach their goals, and to reach their highest potential. If you're going to be inferential school leader, you must promote and help others reach their goals and highest potentials. You must promote others to go far in your personal influence. Number five, build networks. No leader is an island and effective inferential school leaders give a high priority to making connection and engaging with others. No leaders is an island. So it's very important, whether it's with your employees, whether it is with your boss, whether it is with uh, senior leaders, with uh, peers within your organization, or anyone with interesting ideas, you must build networks. You must build a relationship across your organization. You must build network of relationship outside of your organization to increase, to ex- ex- potentially increase your influence. As a inferential leader, you must work to add value to your connections, to people you are connected with, to people you have relationship with. You must work to uh, really make those relationships, make those connections mutually beneficial. People that are connected to you, people that have professional uh, relationship with you, those relationships, those connections must be engaging and they must be mutually beneficial. Uh, You must to have the ability to build relationships, to build alliances, and by doing so, it it will give you the ability to exponentially increase your influence 
both up, down, and across the organization. It's important that you take time to build networks, to build uh, networks of people across your field uh, and outside of your specific organization. Network with folks, build relationship, make connections, so that way you increase your influence all around and all across. Number six, create opportunity for growth. The best employees are in constant need of opportunities to grow and develop. Let me repeat that. The best employees in your organization, in your department, are in need of opportunities to grow and to uh, develop. Leaders who can create or seek out uh, those opportunities and make them available will show uh, a high level of caring, respect, and manifest influence. When people know that, hey, if I come work for you, uh, you will create, you, you have the reputation of creating opportunities, allowing people to grow, more people will come to you. Uh, if you build leaders, more leaders are going to come and work for you. And when you empower and when those leaders move into other positions and into other, uh, when they get promoted, you are exponentially increasing your influence. People know that they can rely on you to help them keep moving forward, to help them continue to grow. An organization's best leaders are those who leverage their influence to make things happen and to cultivate change. Best leaders in any organization leverage their leadership, leverage their influence to make things happen and ultimately to cultivate uh, change to improve the organization for the better. But influence does not happen automatically. It cannot be accomplished by relying on your power, on your authority or title. It takes hard work and dedication of time and talent. I'm going to end this episode with a quote from John Maxwell's book entitled The 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. In there, John Maxwell make uh, this, uh, this statement, and I'm going to read it for it. He says, he who thinks he leads and has no followers is only taking a walk. He who thinks he leads but has no followers is only taking a walk. There you have it. I hope you are able to take away at least one nugget to increase your influence up, down, and across your organization. If you know anyone who can benefit from this episode, please share it. Thank you for listening. Thank you for joining me today. Please consider subscribing to the podcast. Leave a five-star rating and a comment. Share this episode with a friend and on social media. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook for leadership ideas and tips. Again, thank you for joining me today. Until next time.